Hello, our Slater Sync here. The mysterious world of Buchla synths is a quiet fascination for me. One that, out of necessity, is conducted from a distance, as the instruments that make up their catalogue are eye-wateringly expensive. Part of the mystery definitely stems from the exclusivity and scarcity of the instruments, not to mention the interesting legend of the creator. That aside, even through simply watching, listening and reading, the circuits, design philosophy and musicality of the instruments are all worth exploring. There seems to be an air of sonic exploration that surrounds these instruments, and the instruments themselves must be guiding that, in part at least. I'm not always sure that the two pigeonholes of East Coast, i.e. inspired by Moog, and West Coast, i.e. Buckler inspired, synthesis are always that useful. The individual parts that make up the systems have a lot in common, with a few exceptions here and there, and even then the reality is that there is a whole lot of middle ground between those two points. I think it's more interesting to think about how the individual parts are interconnected, and how they interact with each other, because it's that aspect that will guide the user to a particular way of thinking, and ultimately, to the music they create. For me, the book of Music Easel seems to typify the whole vibe. It looks like some kind of retro-futuristic control panel in an alien spaceship, and sometimes sounds like one. But if we look at the specs on paper, we have two oscillators, a wave folder, a low-pass gate, an envelope, a source of randomness, a five-step sequencer, and a cool pressure-sensitive keyboard. Well, the Mini Root 2S has a lot of that, and I reckon we can bodge the rest. So let's see if we can apply some music ease on magic and build a West Coast brute of sorts. So spoiler alert, we're never actually going to end up with a music easel. Leaving aside the difference in user interface, by my estimations we're short a number of utilities, particularly attenuators and VCAs to plumb everything together at once. But by trying to capture some of the vibe and patch around some of the limitations, we will get a chance to know the Mini Brute a whole lot better and hopefully create some cool sounds along the way. So here we are at an initialized patch, or what passes for an initialized patch on a synth with no patch storage. Uh, I'll put a link in the video description to a video where I talk about uh, setting up an initialized patch. Uh, let's start by coming clean um, with the one place where I'm going to cheat. Um, I didn't want to add anything to the system, no sort of external stuff in the patch bay, no additional instrumentation, but the one thing that uh, the music easel, if we use that as an example of a typically buckler type thing, has, uh, which the Mini Brute doesn't have, and that's a that's a spring reverb, and reverb is a vibe, and I really like reverb, so um, for when we need it for the vibe, just out of a shot, I have a reverb pedal. That's the uh, Digitech Polara set on the spring algorithm, not going to win awards for the most realistic spring algorithm, um, but it's nice enough and will suit our purposes just fine. So let's start towards the end of the signal chain of our synth and we'll talk about the low pass gate. So officially we don't have a low pass gate on the Mini Root 2S. What a low pass gate is uh, in essence is a VCA and a filter that are coupled together in such a way that when the um, amplitude, uh, the volume if you like, of the VCA is high, so loud, it is bright, and as the amplitude comes down and it gets quieter, so does the filter uh, shut off a low pass filter so that it gets darker as it gets quieter. Now a low pass gate is actually a very wonderful thing because that kind of idea of things getting darker as they get quieter is something that a lot of acoustic instruments will do as well. So in this very, very synthetic in synthetic way, um, we're still getting something that's sort of intrinsically uh, acoustic. That's, that's a wonderful thing, in my opinion. So how do we uh, uh, emulate a low pass gate on the Mini Root 2S? Well, all we need to do is make sure that our amp VCA, so this section here in the patch bay, is being controlled by the same modulation source as our filter, the uh, FM uh, control, or we could do it with a cutoff, either would work. So, um, as it happens on the uh, Mini Root 2S, our amplitude is um, by default controlled by the AD envelope here, which is either a two stage or three stage envelope which is uh, good because that's kind of what we have on a, uh, a music easel as well. So um, 
if we have this switch set down to trig, it's a two-stage envelope where we have an attack and a decay. So we can do plucky kind of things like that. And what's note, uh, what you should note here when it's in trigger mode is it doesn't matter how long I hold down the note for, whether it's a short or long shape, it's always going to um, complete its entire journey. If we set it to uh, gate mode, what we have is an attack hold decay. So we have uh, an attack section, gets to the top, it holds, and as I release, we release rather, we get this decay section. In this case, how long I press down the uh, the key is going to make a difference. Um, essentially, uh, as soon as I release the key, it goes straight to the decay section, no matter where it is uh, in the envelope. Otherwise, and we can do things like do th things as well. which is also something that's quite West Coasty, West Coasty. So um, how are we going to couple uh, that together? Well, we can come from the output of our AD envelope and take it into the FM of our filter. Now on the um, mini roots patch bay, the outputs of um, sections, whenever you see something that's highlighted in white, essentially, these are um, half normaled. So that means that because I've patched into the output of the AD, it doesn't have any effect on the way that it's rooted behind the scenes. So we still get that behavior in the amp VCA. So essentially, as soon as you plug into the output, you are splitting the signal. So you're, it's still going to the original place and it's going to the new place as well. If you want to break a connection, you have to break it at the input. So if I wanted the amp um, to not be affected by the AD, I'd have to go into the AM of the amp, which is where it would be connected behind the scenes, half normaled. So um, we go from the output of our AD and we can go into the frequency modulation of our filter. We can turn our cutoff down and turn our FM up. And now we're getting that. We're going longer so you can hear it. You can hear that as it gets louder, it's also opening up the filter. Lovely f plucky sounds. Now, low pass gates are built around a slightly different circuit architecture to the way that what we're doing here, there's factuals involved and stuff, which give it a particular character. But on a synth where we don't have a proper low pass gate, this will be uh, close enough for jazz, I think. One other thing to note is if we wanted our low pass gate in inverted commas to be controlled by another modulation source, we do need to make sure that we are going to patch both the AM on the amp and the FM on the filter uh, together. We you don't have to patch anything here at the moment because of course it's uh, half normal behind the scenes, but if we wanted it to be controlled by uh, say an LFO, we would need to make sure that we split the signal out, possibly by using a stack cable. So we would go to the AM and also the FM, like that. And there we have our low pass gate being controlled by an LFO instead. But as it happens, for now, let's stick with it connected to our AD envelope, I think. Great. So in East Coast synthesis, the typical approach is that we take one or more rich sounding uh, oscillators, uh, we run them through a filter, that filter moves over, the, over time through modulation, and that sort of shapes the timbre of the sound over, over time. Uh, and you know, that's a great approach that serves us very well in a lot of, in a lot of places. In West Coast, one of the typical ways um, to alter the timbre of the sound is not just to make use of our low pass gate, but also to take our oscillators and either process them or modulate them in such a way that they generate additional harmonics on top of the basic waveform. And the two ways that that happens uh, in, in the music easel world is through um, modulation of uh, one oscillator, either on another oscillator or on the amplitude of that oscillator, so FM or AM, and also through wave folding. So let's take a look at that now. So let's start by thinking about uh, the modulation side of things. So I'm going to start with um, my first oscillator here. I'm going to switch over to the triangle wave. Do you like a triangle wave? Underrated wave shape. Um, Okay, so modulation of this wave. Let's let's start with the uh, frequency modulation. 
Now you'll notice uh, maybe that there is an FM knob just here. And as we turn it up, let's switch to a gate um, envelope so we can hear it. We can do some pretty extreme um, FM there. Now, the FM knob uh, by default is taking its input from oscillator two. So we're doing um, audio rate FM here. So oscillator two. Almost perfectly in tune, good. Um, so even without hearing it, by adjusting the FM amount, we're getting uh, quite um, radical changes to the timbre of the sound. What we're also getting when we do that, however, is quite a radical change to the tuning of the sound. The main culprit of that, in, in this case, is the fact that the FM here, uh, on this knob, which is represented on the patch page just here as an input, is exponential FM. And exponential FM is great for getting very rich timbres, potentially, and getting very crazy sounds. But as you apply more modulation, which is what we're doing as we're turning up this knob, it's going to throw the tuning way, way out. Now, if we look at the patch bay uh, for VCO1 in this section here, there is also an input for linear FM. So uh, linear FM is going to be slightly uh, less extreme in terms of the timer, but also less extreme in terms of the uh, tuning drift. So uh, if we want to have VCO2 be affected by our uh, linear FM instead, we can just go from the output of VCO2. And remember, outputs are half normal. So even though I've plugged something in here, we can still hear VCO2 and we can plug it into the linear FM. And it's still sounding pretty extreme, and you can still hear that for different notes, things are still being thrown quite a lot out of um, out of tune there. And the reason for that is that the linear FM is not rooted through an attenuator in the same way that the exponential FM is. So we, whenever we patch into the linear FM directly, we are getting the full whack. So essentially, it's the same as, as us having the FM knob turned all the way up. We've got no um, way to get any subtlety out of this. So let's tame this a little bit. So rather than going straight from the output into the linear FM here, let's go into an attenuator down here in our attenuators section. Attenuator is just going to allow us to lower the um, output voltage that we're getting here. So we come out of here and we can go into the linear FM input there. And now when we turn up, um, so this is attenuator one, which is on this knob here in the filter section, it's just where it is. And you can hear that about halfway up, we're starting to get a bit of tuning drift. And yeah, we do get into that kind of extreme side of things, but we've got a lot more range there where it's actually uh, sort of usably staying in tune. Now, of course, if we change the wave shape of um, VCO2, we're going to get a different flavor to those harmonics as well. I like so. Right. Now, so we've got a way to introduce new harmonics into our oscillator through frequency modulation here. But um, we still don't have any way to change this sort of over time. What if we wanted, for example, this knob, this FM amount to be uh, influenced by, say, our AD envelope? How can we achieve that? So our AD envelope is output and control voltage, of course. Uh, that's what is controlling our filter uh, cutoff amount. Uh, the FM of the filter, and also the uh, loudness of our amp. Uh, and whenever we want to use control voltage to uh, control the level of another thing, what we want to use is a VCA. Okay, so uh, let's come... Let's unpatch this for a second. So let's come out of VCO2 and into the input of our VCA. Then we're going to come out of our VCA into our linear FM. 
So without anything patched into the control voltage, we're back into that situation where we're getting the full whack. Uh, so what we'd like to do is come out of our attack decay envelope. Oh no, never fear. We can split the signal with a stack cable. So I'll grab the stack cable here. I can continue go where it's going. And now we can also take it over to the CV input of our uh, VCA. Now, if we play a note here, we can hear that, that FM is being influenced by our AD envelope. Which is a pretty cool sound. But it's, again, at the upper end of the uh, envelope sweep, we're still getting that full full power uh, linear FM. So we do want to still use our attenuator on top of that so we can come out of our VCA into our attenuator, out of our attenuator into our linear FM. And now, have an attenuated uh, VCA control voltage uh, controlled FM amount. It's quite a, quite a cool sound and not, it doesn't have to be as extreme. And having that little wobble at the top there I quite like. Quite a cool uh, bass sound. Okay, so now we have uh, control voltage, controlled uh, linear FM. Wonderful. Okay, so that's our linear FM. Um, and that's what I'm going to use for the rest of the uh, patch. But I did also mention that um, an option that we would have on Music Easel is for amplitude modulation as well. And we can do that uh, on the Mini Brute. But there are two approaches that I've kind of come up with, and neither of them are perfect. And um, both of them are kind of hacky, though they do have some great sounds you can get from them, actually. So I do want to just quickly mention them. So I'll just unpatch everything to do with our linear FM just for a second. I'll repatch it. Uh, off camera in a minute. So we'll just unpatch, 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 unpatch. So we just want our our fake low pass gate there. Great. Okay, so uh, two different approaches to do the AM. So the first um, uh, is going to make use of the VCA again. So uh, what we can do is we can take the output of the triangle wave here. And remember, tapping an output is not going to stop it from uh, going to where it was going normally. Um, so we're going to take that into our VCA. Uh, we are going to take the output of our VCA into the external input there. And what that means is now that we've got a copy, a slightly quieter copy of the triangle wave um, on the external slider. And then if we want to amplitude modulate this signal, of course, all we really need to do is take the output of our VCO2 into the CV input for our VCA and There we have some AM. Now the nice thing about AM is it doesn't really matter. How we apply the AM amount, it kind of stays in tune. Obviously, let me qualify that. It, it, it's not the same pitch as it originally was, but it will stay in tune across keyboard in a much more uh, manageable way and at the top of the tuning we can get all these great glassy sounds and we can mix between the two so we just want a little bit of glass
using different wave shapes is going to give us different So that's quite neat. Um, what we can't easily do in this setup is give ourselves uh, control voltage control of the AM amount. We could run stuff through an attenuator, but we can't automate it because we've only got one VCA here. So um, let's look at another approach that gives us um, potentially access to control voltage uh, control over the AM amount. So for this approach, um, a bit like we started with the linear FM, we're going to take the output of our VCO2, which is going to be our modulation source, and go into um, the input of our VCA. We are going to um, tap off the AD, because we'll use that as our modulation source again, and go into the CV of the VCA. And the output this time, we're going to go into the amp amount of um, rather the amp control of our amp you can hear that we've now got a changing timbre from our modulation And that's a very lo lovely thing as well. Now, the reason I say that's a bit of a uh, hack, although I can't hear it now, is that I would expect to have a little bit of bleed through. Just naturally happening at all times. Oh no, I guess, I guess you wouldn't actually. Okay, so... <laughs> I, so one of the main disadvantages I thought were, were there actually isn't there now I think about it more clearly. Um, but what we don't have and what we cannot have is an un-AM version uh, of anything now because it's going into our master amp here. So there is no way that I can now, say, mix in a clean version of anything. Oh, okay, we do get a little bit of bleed through without any signal. Wasn't totally wrong. So we can never get... Oh, that's, that's nice with the... Oh! Reverb. Sorry, sorry I digress. That's a cool sound. So what I was saying is uh, we can never get a um, non-AM version of anything out of this synth now because it's the main amp output that we're now modulating. Perhaps that doesn't matter to you. Perhaps you are a big enough fan of this sound that you're willing to uh, live with that fact. Um, and maybe I am as well in some situations, but um, not today. I'm going to repatch um, the FM uh, a linear FM control instead and then we'll move on to another section of the synth. Okay, so that's enough uh, modulation of the two oscillators. The other way that we can introduce additional harmonics in a West Coast environment is via a wave folder and the lucky thing is on the Mini Brutes US we have a wave folder. Great, uh, that wave folder is called the Metalizer in this case. So um, by default it's applied to the triangle wave um, Let's go back to a gated sound. And let's uh, turn up the metalizer. In here we have all of those additional timbres across the uh, sweep of that knob. Now, um, if we want to have control voltage control over that, all we need to do is patch it into the metal mod uh, input uh, just up here in the VCO1 section. And then this knob here will act as an attenuator for that control voltage. Uh, so just for the moment, uh, let's 
Should we double stack? Should we use the, the AD envelope as well? So just a, a, a quick note, we could double stack and take the output of the AED into the metal mod. And I think that probably r r means that our patch is easier to read, right? Um, but it's worth just pointing out that we don't need to actually use an additional stack cable. I can actually daisy chain out of this control voltage here, straight into there. And if we turn up this knob and maybe turn up the metalizer a little bit, we should be able to. I find that smaller. Smaller knob movements are, are useful in the metalizer. It gets really extreme very, very quickly. Um, the other thing that's um, worth noting is that sometimes it's. Uh, you kind of have to balance where the start point is by turning up the metalizer knob a little bit as well. Uh, but yeah, that's 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 an easy one. Uh, so I'm just going to double stack this because it makes the patch a little bit easier to read. So I'll split twice out of here. Feed that under there. So the other thing to note with the um, with the metalizer is that essentially what we're getting on the um, triangle slider and the triangle output on our patch bay is the output of the metalizer. So internally in here somewhere, the triangle oscillator is going into the metalizer and then out via this uh, slider here. But we can actually put anything we want into the metalizer and it will come out of this slider here. So for example, if we wanted to, instead of folding our um, triangle wave, instead fold our sawtooth, we can just take the output of our sawtooth and put it in to the metal in there. And now this slider is actually the folded version of our uh, sawtooth wave. And that means that we can blend together the two. Does that sound low down? Nice brassy sound. Give it a bit of FM as well. chaotic sound. Let's try that back with the uh, triangle instead. <laughs> oh yes. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Bit of spring. We can mix oscillator 2 in as well if we wanted. Which is a big low sine wave. Try that a bit more plucky. That's quite a mighty <laughs> bass sound. And by balancing these two different additive approaches. We can get quite the range of different timbres. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about the control of um, these timbres. At the moment, we've just got everything going through the AD envelope, which is you know, fun, but maybe a little bit limiting. So we've got kind of three different places where we have uh, modulation of uh, the control voltages uh, other than our AD envelope. Uh, if we were thinking about this in a kind of music easel kind of place, we've got the keyboard, that cool metal keyboard, and we don't have one here. We can maybe plug in a 
micro freak, but there is something that this does which is similar. So we'll we'll talk about that. We've got um, some random voltage, and we've got the five-step sequencer as well. So um, let's start by talking about the metal plate keyboard. Uh, the metal plate keyboard is a really, really cool thing. It's one of my favorite features of the uh, Micro Freak. And the reason for that is the whole approach to pressure, how much of the uh, key you're pressing down on having some effect over the timbre of the sound. Now, we actually have that on this um, little keyboard here as well. Uh, and that's because by default, um, the pressure output of these pads is represented on our um, on our, our patch bay. Uh, if we don't do anything else to the sequencer, it comes out of this patch point here. So for example, if I wanted my FM amount to be modulated, not by my AD envelope anymore, but instead by how hard I'm pressing down this uh, key here. I want to unpatch the CV going into our VCA, which is what's controlling our FM amount, and we'll just extract that stack cable. So we're still going into the metalizer. So now we don't have any control um, that's been modulated, but we do still have the uh, attenuator there. Uh, if we want it. So if we want to instead uh, control the FM amount by how hard we're pressing the pad, we can simply take an output from the pressure there and into the CV of our VCA. If we go for a uh, gated sound, turn this up. Find a balancing point. Now how hard I press down the key, Be how uh, modulated that sound is. But that sounds good on a lower octave. It's quite sensitive, maybe. Um, plugging in the uh, Micro Freak uh, would make more sense in this case. There's an output on the Micro Freak uh, for the pressure of the keyboard that maybe gives you a bit more granular fine control there. Okay, so let's talk about the sequencer. Now, we have a five step um, sequencer uh, on the music keys or five steps is a great thing because the most common meters in Western music tend to be based around fours and threes, so by having a five-step sequencer, you have all of these really cool um, sequences which run over each other. Um, so, one way that we could approach this is simply to go last step, number five, and we could just have a sequence here running. Maybe slower. Yeah, and, and, and just approach it in this way. Which, it's fair enough. Uh, and that is indeed a five-step sequencer. Uh, but it's a five-step pitch sequencer. And actually, what's more interesting potentially is if we have a five-step voltage sequencer instead. And we could apply that voltage to pitch, of course, because that is how we get uh, pitch movement anyway, naturally. But we could apply it to other things and we could have a bit more granularity that uh, a quantized pitch doesn't actually give us. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to come across to the uh, Mod 1 track here, what's marked fellow here, but won't be for much longer. If I hold this down, I can change what this is going to be outputting. I'm going to switch it over to 5 volts because I find that's a good, a good balance. Right, so um, let's assume we want to control pitch to begin with. So if I take the output of the Mod 1 track and go into the pitch of VCO1, that's going to override 
uh, whatever pitches we set here. So although we have all of these pitches set on here, you can hear that changing these is doing nothing now uh, because it is what we have on this sequencer instead that's the important thing. Oh, need to set that to five steps, of course. So now we're controlling pitch but via voltage instead. Which means a side effect of that is that we don't necessarily always get things exactly in tune. Which I think is quite cool. <laughs> Your mileage may vary. Maybe slow that down. Okay, we need to slow down everything if we're going to do that. But we don't have to apply that just to pitch. So we could take another one of our stack cables. Nice. And rather than just sending that to pitch, we could have that controlling our FM mount. Higher notes are going to be more. Oops. More modulated. Or we could have that affecting our. metal mod about instead. So our low notes have very little and our upper notes have much more. I quite liked it when we had it on the FM though. So uh, we will go back to having this go into our FM CV amount and stick with this going to our metal mod. Or, indeed, just while I'm thinking about it, we could uh, take the output of... No, don't worry about it. <laughs> Sorry, thinking aloud. So uh, the other source of... Let's maybe take it away from our FM for the moment. Okay, so the other uh, source of modulation that we have that's really, really important in this kind of environment is random, uh, random voltage source. So the way that we most easily going to be able to apply this is by switching one of our LFOs to random. And if we set the sync to seek, so it's going to change on every step. Now we have a tempo synced um, modulation amount. So if we take the output of LFO1 and go into CV of, say our FM again.
or maybe we instead of having this control our pitch perhaps we just uh, use a stack cable between our LFO and our pitch and now we get random notes and random FM amounts And we can use uh, the voltage sequencer to do our metal mod instead. And now we have a rhythmic. And then we can start thinking about, well, let's take another random voltage. This is cheating a little bit because we have two here, whereas you would only have one. And we can take LFO2 now to affect the attack time. Or the decay time, perhaps we better for the moment. get some very uh, electronic <laughs> places. You might need a music easel full of acid to uh, fully enjoy this. <laughs> Certainly it's nice when the uh, when the machines start talking back, isn't it? Okay, so I've been patching off screen for for a few minutes just to put together a patch which does a load of stuff. Uh, <laughs> um, kind of really meant to be set with the envelope looping and there's the attack and decay are being modulated by various things etc but I guess the oh, turn that off loop for a second the last part of the puzzle here is that at the moment our clock is being uh, controlled by the internal clock of the mini brute which means everything is happening on a regular pulse, which, you know, it's very conventional. So let's, um, as a final sort of piece of the puzzle, let's decouple the mini root from its clock altogether. So the approach that we're going to use here is by making use of one of our random VCOs. So the clock is basically looking, uh, the clock input here on the sequence uh, patch here is... Uh, looking for a high voltage and our random uh, LFO is occasionally going to hit a high voltage and then the rest of the time it's not. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this one to be a free running LFO rather than a synchronized one and we'll just set the, the rate somewhere in the middle. Uh, I'm going to press the sync button here and get it so that it is on the clock 
setting. And then I'm going to patch from the LFO one output into the clock here. Now, hopefully when I press play now, we'll see that this is no longer moving at a regular pace. And the low we have the rate here, the generally slower it's going to run. So let's set our looping. And this is cheating slightly because we've got a second random voltage from the LFO2 here, which you would necessarily have in Buchla world, in the music easel anyway. But by decoupling The sequencer, the stuff that's reliant on the sequence progressing, which is going to be things like the pitch or the VCO, primarily the pitch of the VCO, but also the synchronization of this LFO here. <laughs> Love it. Um, sorry. Got lost in the, in the sounds for a second. The pitch of our main VCO, which is also going to be controlling the pitch of VCO2, plus the uh, synchronization of this random source, which is going to be controlling the FM amount and the decay rate of our AD. And then our AD cycling around is controlling, obviously, our low pass gate, but also the metal mod. We're getting a very interesting, and some may say experimental, <laughs> patch. <laughs> and it, and it, it might be an, an acquired taste, but I like it. Just make our low pass gate a little darker. That's a lot of fun. That's a lot of fun. Anyway, thank you for making it to the end of the video, if indeed you have made it to the end of the video, which I guess you have if you're hearing this. Um, I know this is probably quite a long video. The feedback that I got back from my big, long uh, Digitone drone video was that people quite enjoyed the long form videos. So um, I, I hope that that is still the case on this day with this video. Uh, if you did enjoy it, if you learned something new, if you've uh, found some inspiration to go play with your synths, uh, please do leave the video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. You know, always new synthy things and performances coming as often as uh, childcare and child sleep patterns allow. As always, thank you so much for joining me. Take care and until next time, bye bye.